right, hello everyone and welcome to another Workshop Wednesday. My name is Matt Sykes, a systems engineer here at Verify, and I will be your host for today's workshop. Today we're joined by Jim Schultens, another SE over here, and he's going to walk us through customizing your Verify report colors and logos. Hey Jim, how's it going today, buddy? It's going good, Matt. How are you? Doing well, doing well, thank you. All right, everyone, so we're going to, uh, going to start off with a quick overview of our company and what we do. Next, Jim will show us how to customize your reports and reflect your brands. Uh, we will pause for Q&A and get some of your questions answered. During the demo, if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the Q&A panel in the bo bottom right corner of the screen, not the WebEx chat panel, but the Q&A panel. After QA, we, after QA, we will reward one lucky attendee a $50 Amazon gift card. So hang around and see if you have won. A uh, quick overview of Verify. <laughs> Verify is the preferred analytics and management solution for Cisco collaboration. We provide industry-leading CDR, UCCX, and Cube call analytics, customizable dashboards and widgets, remote phone control, change management, and dial plan management. But today we're going to focus on the Verify report styles and logos. If you have any other questions on any of our other features, please feel free to chat them over to me and we'll take those offline and get those answered for you quite promptly. All right, so one more thing before we kick things off and Jim, Jim takes the wheel here. Uh, for those of you who are looking for a more hands-off Verify experience, we do offer a managed consulting service. This is a service that provides a dedicated Verify SE to do all the heavy lifting, giving you and your users a complete hands-off experience. Kind of uh, think, of, think of it almost as a uh, Verify being an extension of your organization, for lack of a better term. It provides upgrades, one-on-one -on -one training, report and dashboard building, or anything you need, honestly. Your, dedica your dedicated Verify SE has you covered. The only thing you have to do is just reach out to us. So if this is of any, uh, if you need the additional information on our ECS offerings, feel pleased to reach out to us and we will contact your service manager and get uh, see if ECS is right for you. All right, with all of that said, I'm gonna kick it over to Jim and he is going to take us on into the wild. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. Hope everyone had a nice holiday weekend and is gearing up for fall. Uh, fall means cooler weather and football. So today's workshop, we're going to focus on football and tailgate party. No, just kidding. Uh, we will have a football theme today. But as Matt did mention, the real purpose of today's workshop is to go over some ways to add or change colors and logos, add logos to your reports to reflect your brand. Uh, these will apply both to the call analytics reports as well as our all right, so we're going to focus on the appearance section of the settings menu here. That would be right in here. And you notice we've got logos and report styles and settings. But before we get there, I just want to go over real quick. The um, default system logo is obviously Verify logo. So that's up here in the right corner of the reports. And obviously that can be changed to your logo. And so we're through and show you how that is done. The slides here. And to do that, obviously, we're going to go back into our settings into logos. As soon as that comes up here, you'll notice the system report logo is the verify logo. And I would just edit that, find my JPEG or PNG file. Notice the uh, system size recommendation, 120 pixels by 100 pixels. Uh, the reason for that is to kind of keep that logo kind of small so it doesn't interfere or take over the report page. Um, uh, you, know, you don't want your logo to be the main part of the report. You want your report data to be. Um, however, for demonstration purposes, I am going to pick a larger logo, mainly to be able to see it and go with my today. So you've got the system report logo here. Um, and how does that look on reports? So obviously I said it's a bigger logo. I believe this is like 550 by 300 pixels. So quite large for a logo, not something we'd recommend you do. I do go into my reports and run a, just a quick sample report. This really doesn't have any data because I'm doing it today. But just to give you an idea of what it looks like, that Verify logo I showed you earlier earlier would be replaced with my, the football logo. 
So I've got that up there. <clears throat> and let's say you've got your, your logo, but then you've got a couple clusters. I've got a couple clusters in my lab here. And each cluster wants their own logo as well as the system. That by going back in the logos. And you'll see that down here, if you've got multiple enterprises, you'll have a, a two logos to choose from here, but I've just got the one. And over on my right, I've got add or edit cluster report logo. So that's going to be where I would choose my logo for each cluster. We'll start with the blue logo. Choose that. In keeping with our football theme, uh, these teams were picked at random. No, no, uh, nothing on my part or Matt's part with picking these. So, actually, I'm going to go back and choose my red cluster. Go for that. And so I've got my each cluster has my own logo. How will that look in reports? And I'm going to just run my sample report again here, give you an idea what that looks like. The blue cluster, or what we're referring now to, I guess, as the Cowboys cluster, we are showing that in the upper left corner with our system logo on the right. Back and change my cluster, red cluster. Let's run another sampler report, mainly for time issue. I'm just running this with no data, just focused on the logos up at the top here. And here's my red cluster or the chief's cluster, all right? So let's say you want, um, you don't want the system logo. You want each cluster to have their own logo, but you don't want the system. We can do that. Kind of a workaround way to do it, because if you notice up in the logos for the main system report, the only option I have is edit, or I can restore my system default logo. Click on confirm. That's going to bring me back to my verify. So what I did, I took my screenshot tool and just snapped a picture of a small white area, white space here, and upload that guy. Saved it as a JPEG file. So I've got my blank white JPEG. Save that. So it really doesn't show a logo. Even though there's a logo there, a small white logo, it doesn't show and it doesn't affect the reports when report. I'm just going to do a cluster. Run that real quick. And logos will only show up on the PDF reports. So if I ran this in HTML, you would not see this or Excel or CSV. See the it's just for the PDF. So again, got my cluster logo. I don't have a system. Um, if for, by chance you don't want, you want the system logo without a cluster logo, but you don't want it on the right, you want it on the left, uh, you can just go ahead and into your cluster logos, obviously. Just change your cluster logo to what you want your system logo to be on both clusters and that will be the same. Here, choose my. football system logo, I would do that here, and then I would do the same for here, and that would show up on the right. We don't have the ability to move a cluster logo to the right side of the report. It's mainly formatted on the left side. Like I said, if you want your system logo on the left, you can just put your system logo as each cluster logo, or if you have more than one cluster, you just put it as one. All right. Um, I think that covers it for logo. Here, notes, good. So we're going to move on to the uh, report styles and settings. Here.
I'm going to slide this guy over. So what I did, if you click on this preview PDF, this will give you this file here. It's kind of an example of what will show on the report. Um, I've got a couple different sections over here. I can go through and we'll go through each one of them. Uh, the document section is the main document. Um, and this top part portion kind of uh, relates to the entire you know, main document and any other related pages that go along with that. Um, so the margin size is for all sides. Uh, default is 40. That's what I've got this set for is 40 here. So you can see. My margins all kind of even on, on both sides and top and bottom. Um, and the font family is Arial. That goes throughout the logo. Uh, throughout this, you can't pick a different font for each section here, but you can change the sizes. Um, so I'm going with Arial. We've got a couple other choices, kind of limited, but um, these are what you get to choose from. So I'm going to stick with Arial. Sample that. And uh, this cell padding, think of each one of these sections kind of as different cells. So my cell padding default is four. We've got the option to go from zero to 10 on that. And I'm just going to stick with four, bring my sample back up. Actually, I've got a couple samples of more uh, extreme cases of this cell padding. So this is zero. Obviously, you don't want that because it scrunches things together. But um, then, Conversely, this is the highest, which is 10, which kind of spreads things out a little bit too much. The data your report would be just pages and pages if you got a lot of data. So you can go somewhere in between. We picked four for a default, so that's what we're going with. And that gives you this kind of you know, cell padding here. Um, the next section down here is the title, which refers to this section here or the cell here. Um, I've got a background color of white. Text color is black. And if you click in here, you can change these colors. You can give it the hex code that you want the color to be, or you can kind of just use this slider and the colors if you want that, for instance, or for the text. That allows you to change the text for each of these. This one is, is again, the title. My font size is 16. Notice they've got that. And my border, I've just got um, my border color is this blue, bluish color. And I've just got the bottom border. Notice I have zeros on these, so this color won't show up because it is zeros. But the board, bottom border on the title is four, so it's a little bit thicker. All right. Over, I'm going to ignore the header and footer. We're kind of um, phasing that out. So I'm just going to hop on over to section title and text. Sample over, and that refers to these two. So again, similar to what we just went through with the document title, you've got your background color, you've got your text color. Um, one thing I didn't point out is your weight, which is normal or bold. So you can bold anything you want as far as text and our font size is 12, which is a little bit smaller than what we had our document. And again, I've got a border, bottom border, just two, so it's a little bit thinner than the four over here. And then my section text, very similar with uh, no border on the bottom of that. So, um, and a little bit smaller font size for that. So, right. Again, any of these, if you know your hex code for your color, your company color, you can just type it in here. And any changes you make, make sure you save it. Um, so if you save your something in this site, section title and section text, save it and go back up here and do a preview on PDF, preview on PDF, which I don't have to use anymore, basically. It's either Excel, PDF, or in some cases HTML. So you can preview what whatever you changes, changes you make instead of going back and forth. Here, I will bring my sample back up. So the data table 
uh, is referring to this section here, which this page is for um, background color of white. That's what the title is. Font is black, size of 10, and I do have a small border below this. It's kind of hard to see because it does blend in with that color, but you, if I blow that up, you can see a small border on the bottom of this. Um, next section is my uh, data column header. Notice I've got a different color here, green. This was when I had the, my default. So if I were to do a preview here, you would see green in this header. And I do have a small border on the bottom of this as well. And notice my um, font color is white for this. So I do have you know this white here against the blue back. Down a little bit. And then scrolling on down, the table, data table content cells, that's what's referring to down here below the header. Um, notice I've got a background color of white, but I've also got an alternate background color of kind of a light gray. Uh, what that, that differentiates between different rows of data. So it's easier to see, easier on the eyes. So you've got one row of data here, you can see it. change that if you want it a little bit darker, if you want it a little lighter, if you don't want the contrast, you can make it solid. Um, scrolling on down to my data table highlight cell, that's what it's down in here. It used to be orange, I changed to brown for my example. What this is, is if you're familiar with our cradle to grave reporting, in the cradle to grave section, we usually have a, some of those highlighted records highlighted. What that refers to is the record that matched the main search set. So I'm searching for this and there's uh, records related to that, but they don't match the search set. Those will be in the white and the gray, but my main search set uh, record will be highlighted. Choose here. All right. And I do have a border on these. I've got a border on the right and I've got a bottom. Border here finishes it. Data content uh, total cell that's usually at the bottom, and the you know any totals in a report will be bold. I happen to have this bold. I did increase the font size to twelve. Normally that's the same as the font size for your text report. Increase it there so. What I'm going to do is take a report. So I'm going to run a report with actual data in it. And we'll see some of this. All the way through operators, just to get an idea of what I've got in this report. Very simple report. Looking for two different operators. Operator extension 4000, 4080. I'm not doing any grouping in this. And I do have details turned on. I columns here for details and run this. I'm going to run it for a date I know has some data so we can see the actual data. August 1st. Shouldn't be too much data so it shouldn't take too long but it will take a little bit longer than obviously a report with no data and uh, I do have some cradle to grade. So it'll take a little bit longer to generate, but you'll be able to see um, that the um, colors that I chose will be displayed here. I'm kind of going with the football theme, um, you know, green for the for the turf and brown for the football. So let's just have to open here. There we go. So I got got my cluster, my system logo. Remember, I put that in the left hand corner and notice on the PDF, it does scrunch some of this and that's because I did make this totals a little bit larger font and I did that already. So that's gonna affect the PDF. PDF does, as we mentioned before in other workshops that um, if you have more than, I believe it's 10 columns, it will start cutting off columns and show those. The main thing I wanted to show here was the different color 
if I do go down to the lines I have 4,000, that was on my main search set. And these other unrelated uh, legs, but weren't part of the search set. A little bit of time left. I'm going to run this report as HTML, same date range. Cash, just going to run that. And you'll see that um, my all my detail columns will be on this report. That one totals that was kind of scrunched up in the PDF will be spread out. And, you know, if you do want PDF and total looks like you know we're kind of wrapped on that. Suggest uh, lowering your font or getting rid of the bald totals column. All right, let's get it finished up. Open it up, and same colors, obviously, and it, it's just uh, spread out over all of the details of my cradle grave. You'll see the different the header color and the cradle grave search set and record that. Found as part of the search set. All right. A um, couple other things that you can do with this back in the report styles and settings. If you don't want to go through, um, you know, the GUI on this, if you're more of a, a JSON type person, you can export this to a file, create a file. See, it's moving this over. So if you prefer to edit your uh, styles here, you can do that. GUI myself, but uh, power to you if you do this. You can make your changes and then you can export <coughs> these changes. So I think that's all I have, Matt. Uh, any questions trickle in? We actually did have a Besides question. Besides comments here. about the football team I chose. <laughs> you, know those are, you know those are trickling in. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, one question from Laura, and it actually is a valid question here. Um, is there no quick reset to default the color options back? Um, unfortunately, no. Um, you know, if you do run into that, I guess you can, you know, contact us. We can go through a default setting and kind of give mm -hmm. you the hex values to do but there's no magic. Either. Correct, exactly. But but of paramount importance then for kind of that kind of question would be certainly the preview options that we have in the upper right-hand corner yeah. of the screen here. So without certainly obviously make sure the colors and the layout are, you know, as you would like them to be before you go ahead and click save. Because once you click save, you're kind of, you are locked into those uh, styles and settings. Um, but as Jim mentioned, you could always reach out to the support. We can give you the what the defaults are and we can certainly Mainly or or take screenshots it. before you do make any, any changes. You there is that option as well. These sections. That there is certainly that option as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we are at the uh, the Q. Uh, we are at the Q and A po uh, portion. But fantastic job as always, Jim. Uh, very exciting content. <laughs> oh yeah. But, but definitely. Try I mean, to even... fill in as much time as <laughs> it's it, exactly. I mean, it's, make it as exciting as possible. I mean, I definitely did some type of uh, kind of demonstrations on this, you know, before myself, and even actually, you can sit. In, you can sit in here for hours actually customizing all the colors oh, yeah. logos, and yeah. stuff like that so when I, could... when I first saw this this stuff when i first started here i get quite overwhelmed with it yep. so I started playing with things and yeah you can get lost that's when i started doing it too exactly <clears throat> but pretty cool stuff and then you, but you can certainly yeah. definitely you know as jim had mentioned you know uh, align this kind of with your corporate logos uh, excuse me your corporate colors and obviously you know adhere to and use your, your logos within our report structures okay um, if there are any other questions, that was the only one that I was presented so far. So if there are any questions right now is the Q&A portion. I will reshare my screen here if I can find the controls. Share sounds about right. You, I still got it. You want me to drag it over? If you wouldn't mind. Yeah, it's only giving me yep. one option. Problem. There we are. All right. All right, let me just get this header out of the way here. So once again, if there are any questions, please feel free to go ahead and pass them over to us. If not, I will go ahead and resume. So let's give this maybe another five seconds or so. Once I can find the Q&A panel again. Uh, and no more questions just yet. Okay, all right. All right, well, if there have been, if there are no other questions, certainly, or if there are any questions that you're you know, thinking of right now and you have a, don't have a chance to key them into the chat or the Q&A panel, certainly feel free to you know, drop them over to support at verify.com and 
<clears throat> Jim and one of the members on Jim and my team will certainly be able to uh, respond to you quite swiftly. All right, so if there are no more uh, no more questions, I'd like to mention our uh, our user community, Planet Verify, our new online community where you can connect with your peers and expand your knowledge of all things Verify. Plus, you may end up with some new drink recipes from the cantina. There's also where you can go to sign up to be part of uh, the EFT, the Verify EFT options for uh, obviously the Verify 13.0 that is due out in a few weeks. We are running uh, EFT 2 right now, so if the, if the new enhancements or bells and whistles on that release are of any importance to you and you want to get a, a sneak peek at them, certainly feel free to uh, reach out to us and we can uh, get you signed up for that. All right, so now the moment we've all been waiting for. And the, we the winner of this week's workshop gift card is, drum roll please, <laughs> Alan Dang. Woo, congratulations, Alan. Your account manager will be reaching out to you shortly to get you paid. Okay, fantastic. All right, now don't forget to join us next week where Mike and I will showcase how to migrate a Verify system from a Linux OS to a Windows OS. I get the pleasure of going ahead and uh, running with that <laughs> content, so please feel free to join us for next week. Uh, but definitely, everyone, uh, thank you for taking your time out of your day today and joining us. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Thank you and take care. Thanks, all.